Welcome to Father Son Flight Simulator. Today I will be discussing the tweaking I use to get the most out of my VR hardware. Before I start, keep this in mind. Every system is different and has unique characteristics that make one decision more preferable over others. When I was trying to find ways to tweak my hardware and X-Plane settings, I found that all of the videos, articles, and advice I came upon were not for setups that were the same as my specific setup. There are plenty of opinions out there for sure, so when you get ready to take the plunge into VR, you'll need to really pay attention to your specific hardware and software circumstances to obtain the best results. What worked for me may not be the best solution in your case, just as other people's solutions weren't the best in my case. What I can say is that it is an ongoing process, and as new tools and hardware come out, or updates of X-Plane 11 are released, there may be the need to adjust your tweaks as well. One thing seems to be common though. If you just go out and buy a VR ready computer, install X-Plane 11 on it, start it up and enable VR with your recently bought VR hardware, for sure you will be blown away at the immersion. But you could be frustrated as well because of what I can only describe as blurriness of certain important factors of the image. Probably the most noticeable items are the hard to read gauges and trying to spot airports far away. This makes being precise in the plane difficult and it detracts from the immersion. It's kind of like trying to fly a plane with less than 20-20 vision, but you forgot to bring your corrective lenses. As a quick reminder, I use Oculus Rift. I also purchased X-Plane 11 on disc and not through Steam. In any case, you will find that it will really become necessary to fine tune your settings from your hardware to all of your software you have running, even what you need to run in the background. So let's get started. The first item to deal with is your PC, and I'm talking about overclocking. Fortunately for me, I didn't have any concerns here. My PC was already overclocked when it arrived, and I didn't need to do a single thing. Overclock only if you know what you're doing, and I'd stay away from this altogether if you're not using liquid cooling. The same for me was true for the video card. I played around with this using a software called Firestorm, which is a free download and I'll leave the link below. If you're going to overclock your GPU, only do it very slightly. Ultimately, I found this made almost no difference at all and as such left it as is. Firestorm is a good tool though to check your GPU temperatures and allows you to set manual fan speeds. PC and GPU overclocking can improve things if you know what you're doing, but if you don't, it's better to leave it be and take the hit on software settings. Next, I highly recommend you use Oculus Tray Tool. It is a free download and I'll put the link below in the description. Oculus Tray Tool has the advantage of allowing you to save profiles for each game separately, so I don't have to set it every time. Just start Oculus Trade Tool and the profile will load when you start applications on Oculus Home. An alternative to using Oculus Trade Tool is to use the Oculus Debug Tool which comes with the Oculus software. Both of these will allow you to change what's called Super Sampling. Super Sampling allows you to enhance the workload of your video card to create faster speed of pixels. In other words, this has the effect of improved clarity but at the expense of overworking your video card to get it. The downside is that it's going to cause your video card to run harder and at higher temperatures and will probably shorten its lifespan. Burn twice as bright but not as long. That being said, so long as you are reasonable with it, it makes a huge difference in the clarity you see inside the virtual cockpit. Where you set it depends highly on your video card capability. Higher end cards may be good with lower super sampling and vice versa. Keep in mind that a 1.5 super sampling will mean twice the work on your video card. That's like rendering four screens instead of two. While a super sampling of two will mean approximately four times the workload. When you are checking super sampling, it might not be a bad idea to monitor the performance of your video card with Firestorm. I have mine set at 1.5 and that seems to give me the most bang for my buck. After that, you will have diminishing returns on performance over the load of your expensive card. I also recommend setting ASW to lock at 45 frames per second as this is the maximum you will get out of your Rift anyway. That's because you're running two displays in your headset and each are taking up half the bandwidth. 
Also, you should maximize your power settings when you're playing X-Plane in VR. It does make a difference. Set power plan to bit sum highest performance at startup Oculus Tray Tool and then back to balance when exiting from VR and closing Oculus Tray Tool. Once you have these set up, then simply leave the tool on and in the background and minimize to your tray. Next, I start up a software called Process Lasso. Process Lasso has a free, indefinite demo period for home users, though it does bug you to purchase every time you start it. I'll leave the link in the description below. I have Process Lasso set to run X-Plane on all but the first two cores. Sometimes Steam users will have conflicts with the VR Compositor program, and if you see conflicts with your VR software, you can set them to run on the first two cores and keep X-Plane processes separated on your PC. This will remove conflicts and the occasional tearing. Since I don't use Steam, it has never really been a problem for me. However, if I did have conflicts, I would try to isolate other VR processing software to run them on the first two cores for a smoother experience. Once you have defined Process Lasso settings, just start it and minimize it. Now I start Oculus Home normally. This activates the Rift headset and activates the hardware. If I'm going to stream or record, I'll also start both OBS and Oculus Mirror. Oculus Mirror is included with your Oculus software and can be found in the directory Oculus slash support slash Oculus Diagnostics. I recommend you create a handy shortcut for it on your desktop. I set OBS to capture the Oculus Mirror and this seems to work just fine. Once you're ready to go, start X-Plane 11 from your Oculus Home library. I recommend you leave X-Plane in windowed mode in case you need to check on software on your desktop. From here you can fine tune your X-Plane graphics settings and mods. For VR I highly recommend using 3J FPS and setting it to max frames per second. Lock frames to 45 frames per second to align to the Oculus Tray Tool. Other VR mods I highly recommend are AviTab and Move VR, as these allow you to bring maps, PDF files, and browser windows directly and easily into your VR cockpit without much hit on your frames. AviTab will also give you an indication of frames per second in your headset directly without having to mess with the debug tool. Lastly, fine-tune your X-Plane graphics settings to secure between 35 and 45 frames per second. I have visual effects to high, texture quality to high, anti-aliasing set to FXAA with draw shadows left off. I have number of world objects set to maximum and reflection detail off with draw part aircraft checked on. Well that's really it. These tweaks are all free to do and easy to implement, even if you are not the most computer savvy person. With these tweaks you should see a huge improvement in the clarity and performance of the simulator, and will greatly improve the immersion. As I said before, always be willing to improve your tweaks. If you have any suggestions from your own experience, I'd love to hear about it, and feel free to leave comments and suggestions of what worked for you. I sincerely hope this helps you get started on your virtual piloting experience. We'll see you next time on Father-Son Flight Simulator. Have a great day.